I have been hearing a common statement from the millennial age group lately that they will never be able to afford a home in the Seattle area. That makes me sad because being a homeowner has so many advantages. I'm going to share with you some creative ways that you can buy a house in the Seattle Tacoma area. In case you don't already know me, my name is Karen Jackson and I'm a real estate agent in the Seattle Tacoma, Washington area. I have done just about everything in real estate. I have rentals, I have bought a home, I have sold a home, I have bought land, I have built a home, I have a vacation property and I flipped a home. I can help guide you depending on your goals. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. I am here to help you. I am sure you already know the advantages of owning a home because you're listening to my videos, but just in case, I will share with you a few advantages of owning a home. Rents in the greater Seattle area these days are almost as much as a mortgage payment and you are just throwing away that money. When you are paying a mortgage payment, you are paying interest, but you are able to write off the interest and the taxes that you pay and get a tax break. And you are also paying money towards the principal to pay off that loan and one day own it. You're building equity. You don't have restrictions on updates or repairs unless you're in a strict HOA, Homeowners Association, or it is something the county would restrict you from doing. But usually you can paint or hang things on the wall, remodel, and make it your own, make it your home. You're building wealth. You're not only paying down the principal and getting a tax deduction, but you are getting appreciation and building a nest egg to either move to a bigger home or downsize to a smaller home and pay cash in the future or use it for retirement. Best of all, it is your home. You have a permanent address and it adds solidarity to your life. So how can you buy a house today when the house prices are so expensive and interest rates are so high? First off, I want to caution you not to focus on interest rates too much. They do make a difference, but the price of the home makes the most difference in payment and long-term wealth. For example, if you have a $500,000 home at 7% interest, the payment would be $3,210 versus 6% interest at $2,892 principal and interest. If you have a $550,000 home at 6% interest, the payment would be $3,182. So if interest rates go down 1%, but prices go up, it will cost you close to the same. Second, save your money. Save, save, save. It is always good to have an emergency fund. Here are a couple non-traditional ways you can buy a house in the Seattle Tacoma area. Number one, buy a house with a family member or a friend. The home doesn't have to be a forever home. It is a first home, a stepping stone to build equity and build that nest egg. You can find a top and bottom floor or a floor plan that would work for all of you. Number two, you can buy a house and rent out a room to help with the costs. People are renting out rooms for up to $1,000 a month these days. That would be very helpful to a mortgage payment. Number three, you can buy a fixer upper home. These homes would typically be below market value. There are some fixer homes that are mostly livable but need some updates. And there are some that needs roofs or lots of repairs, and you cannot get a conventional type loan for those. But you can get a rehab loan. The idea would be to buy the house under market value and then do the minimum needed to make it livable and wrap those repairs into the loan. You can then gradually do updates over time as you can afford them. Or in some cases, if you put the minimum down, depending on how much work the house needs, the repairs could build enough equity quickly so that it allows you to have 20% equity. You can then remove the PMI mortgage insurance payment and lower your payment. Another great option is to buy a duplex or a multifamily home. They just came out with a new loan where you only need 5% down for owner occupied for multifamily. You would live in one side and then rent out the other. The rental would pay for half the mortgage payment or possibly more. You're building equity and sharing that mortgage payment. Down the road, you can take that equity and buy a bigger home that is more suitable or keep it as an investment property and have some residual income and just keep building wealth with that equity. Not everyone gets to purchase their dream home as their first home. In fact, the majority of people don't. 
Remember, this is a starter home, a first home, not your forever home always. I realize these options are not for everybody, but they will work for some people. There are other strategies that are a bit more conventional, so give me a shout and we can discuss them.